Hello and welcome to the Comic Book Showcase, Episode 7. We're going to talk a little bit about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, just hit theaters uh, a couple days ago and we've got lots to say. Uh, joining me, I'm uh, Jamie Hari, the founder of the Marvel Database and the DC Database. And joining me we have Billy and Rab and Mike and Elena as usual. So we're going to jump right in and talk about uh, some of the things we thought that were fantastic and some of the things we thought were a little lackluster. Personally, I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. Uh, a couple of things bothered me, and uh, I, I'm going to start with talking about uh, the relationship uh, between Peter and Gwen. I thought, generally, she was a perfectly fine character, and, and I love the portrayal uh, by Andrew Garfield of Spider-Man, but uh, he did some things that were a little uh, not good boyfriend material. Alana, what do you think about his boyfriend material status in that movie? I think that a superhero stalking his ex-girlfriend is creepy. And then when she calls him to talk about it and he lies about it, that's also terrible. And I didn't enjoy that, and I thought that poisoned everything in their relationship for the rest of the movie. Um, I liked the part where he was all crying outside the, the dinner uh, the dinner get together with her family and he was like, oh, I don't know, oh, I promised your dad, oh. and she's like, you know what, I've had enough of your crap, no, and walks away and then he's like, oh, um, but that was kind of, it was, she was saying, you know what, I've had enough of this crap, and she walks away, and so, you know, he stalks her for, until she calls him, and that's not cool. I thought that that this the like the Edward Cullen thing was definitely kind of weird. But other than that, the the Peter Gwen relationship is a huge highlight of the movie for me. I feel like right now, I, Amazing Spider-Man Two, not far from the best superhero movie that I've seen in recent years. But easily, other than like that was uncomfortable. But other than that, as far as the on-screen chemistry between them goes, the one thing they're doing right now is the best superhero romance that we're seeing in film. I agree. Um, that was definitely not a superhero movie, but it was 100% best rom-com of the year. <laughs> I disagree with you. I thought it was a... I, I disagree. I think that that was one of the most comic booky superhero movies I've seen in a long time, in a way that was sometimes kind of ridiculous, but sometimes I loved in ways that most people would probably hate it for. I completely agree. The way that they played that whole movie was it like it rolled out just like a comic book. How they dealt with all the relationship things that they go through in the comic books, and then the action in between. Like I agree with you 100% on that one. But it was very much a rom-com in certain parts, and I just did not appreciate some of it. I felt they drag, dra dragged out a lot of their relationship. Yo, wait, you're going to hate on a Spider-Man movie for that like soap opera stuff? That is the meat and potatoes of of Spider-Man comics. I love I I love that we're getting a superhero movie that's actually going into that like yeah, he's got like, you know, like the villain is almost like a secondary thing. Like here's Peter Parker trying to get his life together and make his relationships work and deal with his girlfriend and Electro's not like he's not even like some intensely personal like I know your past villain who the whole movie's about. He's just like a distraction from Peter Parker trying to get his life together. I love that. See, the, well, meat, I... and the meat and potatoes of a Spider-Man movie for me is all the, like, witty quips that Spider-Man yes. has. Like, that's what makes a Spider-Man movie and a Spider-Man comic book for me. So That is my least favorite thing about Spider-Man, period. Is that, <laughs> but that is Spider-Man, so it's so frustrating for me that I have to put up with you people who like that. Wait, you don't like the soap opera or the... No, I, I don't like the, the quips. I don't like... Interesting. The liners. And the pun. How do, you feel, how do you feel about Deadpool? <laughs> Similarly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, actually, I think that was one thing that the Sam Raimi edition of uh, Spider-Man actually did pretty well. Is I mean, you saw Peter Parker having to take out the trash and sort of that, like, um, you know, Mary Jane uh, Watson sort of was the neighbor, the girl next door. And, uh, you know, just the, the, the almost normal interactions that two people who have lived beside each other and grew up together, even though she didn't really acknowledge them until they were teenagers. Um, but, uh, you know, some of that sort of more human aspect. And I think, you know, generally speaking, that's what Marvel has always strived for, is that natural 
as realistic as possible uh, uh, relationship uh, aspect of, of any given character. And Spider-Man especially has always been the quintessential um, character that a uh, young, especially boy, can associate with you know, having the everyday problems of a teenage boy having to go to school and, you know, get picked on by Flash or, or whatever. This is why I disagree with Atlanta about the weirdness of the stalking. I felt that is a real thing that people do. Like, the, he has the benefit of being able to hide on a lamppost several feet away, but I <laughs> might have the benefit of being able to face check my ex's Facebook and... <laughs> Has, 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 that, has that restraining order been lifted yet, Rap? Is, is that still in effect? That's, this is the superhero version of obsessively checking your ex-girlfriend's Facebook profile. It's, it's true. Not... And you know what? That, that fits very well with um, what we were saying before about... Uh, Billy, you, you said it, the Edward Cullen thing, right? Yeah. Where, in fact, Peter Parker sits down on her gravestone and we watch the seasons, and I watch that thinking, oh, yeah, I remember seeing this in Twilight where Bella sits down and is depressed. Like, I mean, her boyfriend just dumped her, didn't die, like Gwen. So that's 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 a legit difference. But, uh, you know, and that, that, that Twilight thing is this, this whole thing for the teenage girls, and Spider-Man being that character who's relatable by young men and portraying this technically normal behavior that's awful, I don't like that. Yeah. Well, that's I again. I definitely agree with you that that was like weird, creepy shit. But this is okay. Like, and going back to Jamie's point earlier, this is what I love so much about. I feel like it's one of the most important things about Spider-Man. He's not that Bruce Wayne power fantasy where when he's not being Batman, you see him like perfectly chiseled body with supermodels oiling him up on his yacht. Like when Peter Parker's hanging out at home, he has a terrible, awful life. And that's part of what makes him such a relatable character. And it's not... They go beyond that to... I think Andrew Garfield's greatest strength in playing Peter Parker is that, yeah, when he's Spider-Man, he's, like, super free and super chill and he's able to get out of his head. But in his real life, uh, he's, he's like, an awkward fucking kid. Uh, all of his relationships with Gwen, like, she finds it endearing because they're both in high school, but he definitely says some, like, weird, awkward things. He's not a smooth guy. The Like, the following your girlfriend thing... That's creepy, and you can, like, kind of understand it from the, like, he is a loner uh, in high school who doesn't really understand how to act around girls 100% yet. But she's into it. She's like, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of romantic because I get you. I mean, they both uh, still have feelings for each other, so their feelings are mutual. It's not like she's she hates him and doesn't want him to follow her around. She kind of secretly wants him to follow her around because she would like him to be there. Regardless, so let's let's jump a little bit to some of the other relationships that uh, Peter Parker maintains, and and uh, you know you talk about Aunt May, and, and I, quite frankly, I wasn't really following the whole aspect of her needing a second job because they needed more money or whatever the case may be there. I, I, I thought that was a little contrived and it didn't add very much, but let's talk uh, just for a second about the parents. So uh, Elena made a good point uh, off, off camera earlier that they spent like, you know, 10, 15 minutes building this storyline up where, uh, you know, he had the subway tokens and did the whole research on Roosevelt and found this, and then he watched a, like a little YouTube video that uh, his dad had uploaded <laughs> 20 minutes or, or 20 years earlier just saying, oh yeah, I love you, kid. You know, sorry I missed out on everything in your life. And yeah, then, like, okay, move along. Under... That's it. Move along. No more story. Nothing to see here. Yeah, That's... it's not like there's this huge underground subway station with a secret subway car that's full of all this crazy scientific stuff where he was able to create a hybrid spider human that, like... Is revolutionary, but that I don't. What about? I don't care about that. I'm it is now you, a YouTube server. That's it. Yeah, I, I'm good to go. My dad loves me. See ya. It that's... seems very strange that his wife would be so intensely focused on the fact that he needs to upload this video that tells the truth that he's not a bad guy. Like the video is not that important, really. It doesn't. <laughs> it's not secret coded data. It's not like an important. File. It's just. It's a live journal. Innocent, you <laughs> bastard. And, and it's not nobody in particular. It just goes to his computer in his secret lab. It doesn't go to anybody. And it's not even conclusive. It's just he said, she said. Like, yeah, I'm not a bad guy. Says me. 
That's I, I, the like the whole subplot, especially even and the fact that that was what they opened up with. I feel like nobody really cares about these parent figures. Like maybe if they were gonna do a movie that was actually about that and bringing that stuff forward, but they're not yet. It feels like it's supposed to pay off a couple movies down the line, and they're trying to reveal a little bit more each time. But I don't care. The movie starts off with like, oh, like Brian and a Spider Man and the web, and you're like, oh wait, man, what's this gonna open up on? An opening shot. Senior citizen versus the world's least competent hitman. <laughs> Struggling feebly on a... What was that guy doing? On a Sony Vio laptop, as we all <laughs> noticed. That there was no shortage of product placement in that, uh, in that movie. No, but it was all one product. It'd be different <laughs> if it was like you see like Pizza Pizza or like Domino's and like... Pepsi, but it was like, no, Sony, 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 Sony. Oh, did we forget to show you? Sony. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> well, I remember I in the first either. one, in the, in the first movie, it was like, look at that, Peter Parker's using Bing. And everyone, everyone I know was like, yeah. Peter Parker would never use Bing, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that was the one problem people had with Amazing Spider-Man 1. Okay, so okay, so let's let's actually just dissect this just a little bit further. Um, we've talked a lot about the relationship between uh, Peter and Gwen and parents and Aunt May. Um, what did we think about? And we'll call him the main bad guy, Electro. Uh, I have so many the the Amazing Spider-Man movies. The weirdest and like one of, almost kind of my favorite thing about them is how weird and comic booky the villains are. Amazing Spider-Man one had the lizard who was insane. That whole idea where he spends the first half of the movie like, oh, I'm just a scientist who, who wants to, like, end this kid. I hope he, that he doesn't get into trouble. I'm so worried about everybody. And then he gets injected with that thing. And 30 seconds later, he's like, everyone should be a lizard. Like, that's, <laughs> that for him is the obvious trainer. Like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it all makes sense to me now that I've seen the lizard way. This is how everybody, lizardocracy, like, that's, <laughs> oh, man. I've figured out how to make Earth a utopia. And Electro also, he starts out as the, as already, even the first time we see him, like an insane character who's talking to himself, and that's never that's not just an antisocial weirdo. That's somebody with like borderline schizophrenia already has serious problems, but just kind of played off as like this oh like sniveling underling type guy, and then immediately it takes nothing for him to turn on Spider Man. He goes from, like, Spider-Man's my best friend to, like, somebody fired a bullet at me who wasn't... And Spider-Man was standing next to that guy? Well, it's because he couldn't remember his name. It was so... It felt very contrived, that whole scene where he sort of turns on Spider-Man. To the extent... I, I mentioned this earlier, and it's the... Uh, I didn't mention it in this, but anyway... The the music for that scene where he turns on Spider Man made me it gave me the embarrassment cringes because it can like they layered in this he hates you he's lying in like the background of the music and it just it made me so cringy because it's like demonstrating things in ways that I feel they don't need to be demonstrated. You, you know just, I felt. I felt that the writers didn't even like even attempt to write a good character for Max Dillon or Electro. <laughs> like they just they gave up. They're like, how do we do this? Like, I don't know. Let's let's look back at some previous villains. Let's look at Jim Carrey from Batman, and let's we'll just I... mimic everything off of that because that's the closest we're gonna get to having a, a good villain possibly for this movie. Because it's either that or Gru from Despicable Me or Rhino or whatever they're calling him. But, like, and on a side note, dubstep does not make dramatic music. <laughs> I agree. When I saw um, when I saw what was going on with uh, Electro's background, uh, I immediately went back to Jim Carrey's Riddler. He, go, he switches so quickly. He, and the whole time, his internal motivations are, like, he says everything out loud. Either he's sitting around talking to himself, like, I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man's my best friend. And then all of a sudden, like, it, in the space of five minutes, he's like, Spider-Man is destroying America. He's everybody's, he's the worst thing that's ever happened. I also feel that uh, Green Goblin didn't get enough development and, quite frankly, was a little cringeworthy. I mean, the special effects or makeup or whatever notwithstanding, I, I, I felt like that they, they built up the, the character of Harry Osborn 
not quite enough to justify serum to bad guy. You know, like, I, I think it wasn't all there. And I think this is largely a function of trying to fit too many bad guys in one movie, and I think that that was the same thing that uh, happened in the, the third uh, Spider-Man movie of the, the Sam Raimi series. Um, too many bad guys, one movie, not enough time for each, and then you get... Uh, a little bit of underdevelopment. Now, generally speaking, I didn't dislike Rhino. Actually, I'm going to put it out there and say I didn't dislike him. I think that, um, uh, you know, they put him... They he, they gave him just enough screen time. Uh, at the end, the way they cut it before they developed a whole other ten scenes of fight, you know, fighting or character development was just right. They just cut it off and said, okay, there's more to Spider-Man's story. This is where we're going to end it for this movie. And then uh, move on. I'm so glad they got classic character actor Paul Giamatti to really nail the subtleties of that character. Also, <laughs> he was pretty hammy. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.